This is going to be a hard name for me. Stepien Wi Kaho? I don't know if I can say Oh, it sounds so beautiful when you say it. Um, anyway, he's going to give us a multimedia analysis of uh, the multimedia piece, I Hate My Stupid Brain. <laughs> it sounds so amazing. So, uh, anytime you're ready. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, today I would like to present about uh, multimedia music or audiovisual music analysis. Um, I will use uh, the Nikasadi piece as an object of analysis. So, um, multimedia music or audiovisual music. Uh, uh, before I continue, please let me know if uh, there's something problem with internet connection or or, 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 or the audio. Um, okay, uh, multimedia music has become an important uh, option for 21st century composers. In multimedia music, the sound is not the only material is used. Uh, which can present problems when uh, we only see all media correlation, uh, correlation through the perspective of some analysis, analysis to do, due to this new method of multimedia music, uh, we have to find another way to analyze and understand how it works. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will be using uh, the Rika Sadi's piece uh, titled I Hit My Stupid Brain as an object of analysis and Marco Ciciliani's method to examine the way in which multimedia functions in most musical works containing multimedia and what we can find from uh, this multimedia relationship that we rarely find, rarely find in instrumental music. So, uh, I my stupid brain is a multimedia music for one performer, like projection and lights and live electronics. Uh, this piece uh, composed by Indonesian composer. Uh, his name is Dori Karsadi. He lives in Germany, in Lübeck, and now he teach in uh, Music Hochschule Lübeck. And then this piece was premiered in 2018. Uh, in this analysis, I will use uh, the, the setup of the video, uh, the piece in the video, uh, a, a little bit different with this uh, setup, with this ideal setup, uh, where in this original setup, uh, the ideal position of the guitarist should be in the uh, projection space. The guitarist must be in the middle between a visual projection of the guitar sound and also, the guitarist must be under visual projection of the AI sound. But uh, for this analysis, I will uh, use the recording that uh, uploaded uh, in YouTube. That a little bit different because of technical issue. So I will uh, divide this analysis into three parts, following uh, Danny Idoni's piece structure. In the first part. Uh, I will focus on analyzing the relationship among media, uh, particularly the relationship between the text projected uh, in the screen and the sound from guitar and the AI voice sound character. In the second part, uh, since the text represented by guitar and AI voice is gone, I will focus on analyzing the congruency between sound, the sound and the light. And in the third part, I will analyze uh, the congruency between near visual material in the screen, the light and the sound. And for this analysis, again, I will use uh, Marco Cicillani's method as point of departure to analysis to analyze uh, the con all congruencies uh, among media in this piece. Uh, I will use Marco Cicillani's method and this uh, method called method for subjective analysis of audiovisual works. It was developed by Marco, and this method has uh, have three categories. The first category is category of mapping, and this category have uh, have three parameters in it. The first one is divergence congruence in terms of synchrony. In this parameter, congruencies or uh, this parameter indicates whether auditory and visual phenomena are predominant. 
frequently synchronized. And the second parameter is divergence correlates in terms of space. This category refers to space and indicates if the spatial arrangement of sound and elements in the image corresponds spatially. Uh, the third parameter is uh, divergence congruence in terms of mass. Uh, the, this parameter indicates if sonic and the visual phenomena correspond in terms of size or apparent weight. For example, larger objects in the visual part are associated with lower and louder sound. And the second category is category of indices. And it has uh, two parameters. The first parameter is divergence congruence in terms of semantics. This parameter indicates uh, whether an audiovisual word exhibits a profile uh, relationship between media of semantic nature. Here, semantic refers to any meaning that is subordinate to what is evident as a visual or oral phenomena. This can be a concrete meaning, as in narrative context, or a symbolic reference or emergence meaning. And then the second parameter of this uh, category is divergence congruence in terms of idiom. This parameter expresses uh, whether there is congruence or divergence between the idioms or styles that each medium, uh, medium uh, uses. And the third category is category of atmosphere and it has three parameters the first parameter is divergence congruence in terms of kinetics this parameter refers to a more general sense of motion and speed uh, the second parameter of this category is divergence congruence in terms of salience and fidelity uh, the Salience itself, this parameter describes the balance between different media and whether one strongly dominates often the other. And for fidelity, this one is whether one is designed in much greater detail than the other. And the last parameter of this category is uh, divergence congruence in terms of thinking. This parameter addresses perhaps at least tangible aspects of a word, namely general moods that uh, the media expresses, here expresses, expressed as thinking, thinking, sorry. And then, now, uh, before I move to the first section analysis, I will play an excerpt of this piece, the first section, the end from, uh, from, from here. I'm here to assist you with your needs. I'm trying to find the best way. Search completed and found no best way other than AIL. Hey, no. You. You said that you choose your mouth with a BB gun. So that's the first section of this piece, and I, I found there's a congruence in terms of synchrony which happens at, uh, in terms of accentuation between the, the sound synchronized with accentuation in the light projection. And after the opening part, uh, the AI, AI voice character like Siri or Alexa, uh, the sound and text on the screen begin to start simultaneously. And there are two parameters happen in this part. Uh, the first one is congruence in terms of idioms, where the, the abstract phrases of guitar sound is made match with the abstract letters here in the left side. Uh, this one is uh, congruence in terms of idioms. And the second one is uh, congruence in terms of semantics, because based on Donnie's statement here, 
uh, the guitar player flirting the AI. The projection for the guitar sound is abstract, and because the phrases played by the guitar are also abstract, Siri or the AI voice character speaks in English and she has a translation subtitle. The subtitle is here, the translation, whose contents are completely different from the from what AI what she say. So, for example, she said yes in the spoken voice, in the AI voice character, but in the but uh, it will be projected in opposite uh, in the in the screen. So, uh, based on this phenomenon, I I found a strong sign that the AI voice character. And its translation uh, or subtitle has a hidden relationship that gives semantic information. While well, the AI voice tries to be polite uh, to the guitar part that hurts her, but actually her response is uh, opposite and it is projected from the screen. Uh, here is the full uh, transcription of the AI voice and its subtitle that projected in the screen. The left one is the, the AI voice transcription, and the right one is the projected text uh, in the screen. So, um, to summarize the analysis uh, from this first section, I will use Marco Cicilliani's Valence Potency and Activity Graphic. This graphic enables us to give parameter values from each divergence or congruence that happens. In a piece that we analyze, this graphic contains uh, each category with its parameter. Um, in each uh, parameter, there is a line that indicates the value of categories and parameters in which the right side show relevant and congruence value. Here, the right side. And then, on the other hand, the left side uh, indicates irrelevant and divergent value. Here is the the left, left side. So here here is the valence potency activity of the first section of Dodi Kasari's piece. And then now I will move to the second section. Section, the character the character of this section is more rhythmical than the first section and then start from minute for uh, uh, 50 seconds the characteristics slightly change for a while here I found uh, that the components in terms of kinetics 
happen in this part when the sound and the light begin to slow down the tempo for 10 seconds before returning to the previous tempo, previous rhythmical character. And then the congruence in terms of tinting also seems uh, to dominate the second section of this piece. And then between minute uh, 5 and 30 seconds until minute 5 and 47 sec seconds, there is congruence in terms of kinetics start to appear again when the tempo of the sound and the light projection start to increase to emphasize the transition part toward the third section. So overall, uh, the second section contains three, three congruences, uh, including con congruence in terms of tinting, congruence in terms of synchrony, congruence in terms of kinetic. And also, uh, there's, there is a divergence in terms of space, where the sound that represented the light projection in minute 3 and 3 seconds appear again, but this time the sound move from right to left and vice versa. Uh, in, uh, in, minute, in this part, the projection light uh, remain in the center, but the sound is moved. Uh, the panning is moved from left to right. So this position is showing divergence in terms of space. And then now I will move to the third section. Uh, sorry, uh, this is the valence potential activity of the second section. And then now the third section. Uh, 
um, this combination of media has its own correlation and congruence. For example, style congruence or idioms, uh, congruency between media and semantic congruence, and etc. And through the use of multimedia, now composers are able to give or to put semantic information through hidden relationship or Hari Rahman call it the Hulk. The Hulk is a content that uh, need, uh, need interpretation by the audience that is produced by combination of each media that boosts some perception layers uh, simultaneously such as visual perception, sound perception and so on and this uh, hidden relationship creates semantic information that produced by supposed activities between media where one media gives information to another media such as in the first section of Karsadi piece, Karsadi's piece uh, where the spoken text produced by AI voice and projected text in the screen gives semantic answer to the flirt of activity that guitar part did and this kind of the help also I, I found many pieces that 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 shows this, this kind of uh, semantic things for example like in in uh, Reinhold Stein the title is Theory of Subject where uh, he start the, the piece with a classical sound that a tonal sound a tonal sound characteristic that played by uh, orchestra uh, but uh, simultaneously uh, in the screen it's written uh, uh, this sound for uneducated listener maybe sounds uh, sounds kitsch but if we uh, look closely if we interpret these things actually uh, there is a satirical thing happen in, in this uh, in this part of, of uh, of Reinhold Stein piece, whereas uh, uneducated itself is like uh, mocking the, the educated listener itself because uh, I assume that mostly people that well educated in new music that know a lot of new music uh, background will say uh, that classical sound uh, is uh, it sounds kitsch in the middle of new music, something like that uh, how semantic things or uh, the hard things happen in a multimedia piece. Uh, thank you, that's my presentation. I hope I'm not too fast, but I think, yes. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. Thanks. Any more virtual have any questions? I, I, I do. Uh, I do. Yeah. I would like to ask, um, I, I was not familiar with this analytical approach by Siciliani. Yeah, Marco Siciliani. Siciliani, okay. Um, are you, I don't know if you're familiar with the book by Nicholas Cook on uh, yes. multimedia, and I was wondering, how Siciliani goes, uh, how different the analytical approach is than compared to Nicholas Cook. Uh, I know that I know that uh, analysis from Nicholas Cook, but I have not read it yet uh, because I do not have uh, his book. But uh, from Marco's um, approach, he developed uh, some parts uh, from Nicholas Cook. You can find in his paper the method for subjective uh, analysis. He also did uh, some uh, comparison with with Nicholas Cook and others, and then he developed more with several several categories and parameters that I use to analyze this piece. Thank so I, I cannot uh, I cannot compare uh, between the between Nicholas Cook and Cicilian because I have not read. Cook. Yes, but uh, thank you very much. It was a very, very interesting approach and uh, very nice analysis. Thank you. Yes, and it's easy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? 
I think it's hard because uh, some of us maybe are not that familiar with the piece and also not yeah. as, as familiar with this method of analysis. So um, I think it's a lot of new information maybe to absorb. So um, uh, even though we did actually talk to Marco Giustiani yesterday. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, it's a very interesting presentation. Uh, any, any questions? Actually, this, this method already published, so you can read the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe Pastor, or uh, you could say about, like, you know, because I could recognize, like, you know, first and second and third section and their differences, but uh, I was wondering how to those sections were, like, connected or layered. Do you have any ideas, or maybe uh, if possible, maybe we could uh, listen to like Ratu, the, you mean? Yes, like the like a mini, like between one and two sections and second and three sections. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so the first section start with with the light projection and the text, and it has not fair, not so hectic gesture. Gesture. Okay. How can I help you? Okay. This is the first section where is uh, where the projected text appear, and then the second section will start from. Okay. Then. Round minutes three. Here it is. It's uh, this one is a transition to the next section. Where is the rhythmical gesture for fast and more hectic? And the text, the project text also is here. Now only the sound and the light projection. Yeah, I see. It's very nice. 